Hi everyone, it's Shari and today we're going to be making this Halloween lantern. So I went looking for colored vellum and I actually had this in my stash, this orange vellum here, but I had a hard time finding it in my local craft store. So when looking at this project I thought well you could use this but what if you couldn't find it and you needed to make your own. So that's actually what I'm going to do on this project. I tried some vellum with alcohol inks and I was just playing around to see how it worked and this is what I came up with and I really like the texture that's on these. So for this project you could use the colored vellum if you have it and can find it in whichever color you like or you can make your own. So I'm going to be needing four panels of this and I want it to be six inches tall and they're going to be four and three quarters wide so I'm just going to take a whole sheet here and cut it at the six inch mark and I'm going to do that with those two sheets and then I'm going to actually cut each piece at three or excuse me four and three quarters so that I'm going to have four panels that are six inches by four and three quarters and I'll show you here in a little bit where those measurements came from now that I've got these four panels here I am going to play with my alcohol inks so I've got an orange and a yellow and I believe this is sunset orange and sunshine yellow maybe and I've got my little foam applicators here and I'm just going to speed up the process a little bit so I played with alcohol inks a little bit but not too terribly much they can be very fun and they're meant for non porous surfaces so that's why I was like well I'm going to see what it does on vellum and it actually made this really cool effect that's you know see through so this is going to be a lantern and we're going to have light shine through this colored panel here so now I'm going to go in with the yellow and you just add drops to this pad and sort of dab it around and those inks are going to blend and move each other around and I'm doing it just on a white piece of typing paper here just to keep the mess from being on my craft sheet so not that I can just throw the sheet of paper away versus having to clean up my craft sheet with alcohol so you just kind of work in the colors there you'll see I'm going back and forth between the orange and the yellow and just working it around till the whole thing is covered and looks the way I want it to look and then I'll set that aside to dry and then I will just do the other three panels exactly the same so let me show you here kind of the construction of this lantern so I'm going to be using that tree backdrop the vertical one which is five and a half by four and a quarter So what I'm going to do on each of these sides is I'm going to have my four and a quarter by five and a half, which is that tree or the frame. And then I want to have a border on each side. And I'm going to make that border to be a quarter of an inch. So the total height is going to be the six inches. You could make it taller. Part of the reason mine is six inches is because that is the width of the plates of my cuddle bug. So I cannot send anything wider than that through my die cut machine. But I know there are wider platforms out there. So if you happen to have one of those, you can make it a little bigger. We're going to be making two pieces that are six inches tall and ten inches wide. And basically, we're going to be folding it in two places right there and there. So we're going to be making two of these and then we will cut out our little seams in each panel. So here I've got a piece of the black licorice cardstock and I'm just cutting it to where it's six inches wide and then I want it to be ten inches long so I'm just going to cut an inch off the end. And I'll do this to two pieces then I can score it at four and three quarters. And my scoreboard isn't big enough, so either you have to move it over, or actually what I did to make sure I got it in the right place was I went ahead and scored that fold line.
And then I can lay that against the edge of my scoreboard and score where the two pieces line up. Now it's really thick so I can't actually score it with it folded so I kind of started it and it went out of the groove so I'm just going to mark that place and then unfold it and line it back up with one of those grooves and go ahead and finish that score line. So you end up with this little flap at the end that is a half of an inch and that's how we're going to connect our two pieces but it's going to get covered up by the quarter of an inch border that we made and then also the quarter of an inch frame that we're going to add back in with that tree backdrop or the frame. So now that I've got my piece I can just center up the tree backdrop in the panel. And then I'm just going to hold it in place with some post-it note tape. Now you're going to see here I'm using the frame that's the exact same size and I'm going to go ahead and cut out both panels at the same time. I probably shouldn't have done that and I should have just waited and run the tree through again and you'll see why because I end up putting a tree on all four sides. Initially I thought maybe I'd do a tr the tall tree on two sides and maybe the little tree border on the other two so that's why I did this frame here. So you can see I used my long cutting plate so that I could cut both at the same time. But if you went ahead and you cut the tree out of each side you would have those pieces to lay back in here in a little bit. So you get this kind of thin frame here. It's a quarter of an inch on all sides. It's kind of spindly, but once we put the pieces back together and make the lantern, it's gonna become more sturdy. So here are my pieces. Now you can decide what side you want facing out. You can turn it this way and have a more matte finish, or you can turn it to where the shiny side is out, which is what I ended up doing because I liked that bold pop of color. But it just depends on what look you want because once the candle's in there, you're going to get the same look of the light shining through. Now this is the really thin, easy he adhesive runner from Scrapbook Adhesives, and I love this thing. You can see it's really small, and this is going to work great on this frame that's only a quarter of an inch wide. Any other tape runner you have is going to be just exactly as wide as this or wider and you're going to have the adhesive sticking out the edges but this little thin stuff is just perfect. And I also like that it's white so you can kind of see where it is on dark card stuff like this. So I've gone around all four sides and then I'm just going to lay my piece of vellum that I have put the alcohol ink on right on that and make sure all four sides are nice and stuck down. So you can see what a great panel that makes. And then I'll just trim off that extra piece once I get both of them on there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the second one on. And I actually trimmed like a sixteenth of an inch off the edge of this just so I didn't have any extra material in the corners and that piece could fold. So you just kind of have to see where your piece ends up and see if maybe it's necessary to just trim off that one little sliver. All right, so here I have my tree panel. And like I said, I ended up deciding I wanted to put a tree on every side. So it's gonna fit right in that hole that we've already cut out because we used that tree die to cut that hole out. So I'm gonna put this adhesive, the really thin adhesive again, all along the edges because the border that this makes is also a quarter of an inch and then I'm just going to put some down the trunk just to kind of tack it down. I'm really not going to worry about the branches and stuff. Um, I don't think it's going to get caught on anything and it's going to stay in place pretty well. So then what I decided was for the other side to change it up a little I'm going to flip my die cut. So it's maybe not that perfect cut edge but you can kind of run your finger over it or maybe a nail file and kind of get those little pieces that might be sticking up off and it looks just fine. So I'm going to put my second tree opposite the other one and that way every panel isn't exactly the same as the one right beside it. And I'll do the same to the other piece. Now, this is the piece that we cut off the bottom of that larger piece of cardstock. I'm going to cut it down so it's just the width of each panel. So again, that's four and three quarters. And I'm going to use these pieces to make 
I'm actually cutting it a slightly shorter, a sixteenth of an inch shorter, for the same reason as the vellum, why I cut it down, so that all that material isn't jammed up in the corner. And then I'm going to use the tree border die, and I'm just laying it on top so I can kind of figure out where I want those trees to fall, and I'm going to make it different on every panel, so it really doesn't matter. I just don't want them all falling right behind the tree trunk. And then I'm going to layer this one on the back side. And I think this has a really cool look, actually. So they're kind of faded out in the background. And they kind of are hidden until the light shines through. And again, I'm going to use that thin adhesive. And I'm just going to mark where these need to be. Because I don't need to go all the way up. And I'm just going to do it on the two sides and along the bottom. You don't want to put any adhesive anywhere else because you're actually going to see it through. And you could use a wider one because now we've layered that tree die back in there. And so now instead of a quarter of an inch frame to work with, you've got a half an inch frame. So you can see here on the second panel, I'm using a wider adhesive. This is the ultra adhesive from Scrapbook Adhesives that really sticks down like super well. And I'm going to be using that one when I assemble the rest of my box. So you can see what a cool effect that has. Now I was going to do just a plain black frame, cut out a black cardstock just to kind of finish it off and give it a nice edge. But then I decided this black glitter paper might be just cooler. So I cut out four frames out of this black glitter cardstock with that largest stitch rectangle frame. And then I'm going to use that really thin adhesive again. And I'm just going to layer that on. And I think that just has a really cool look that kind of defines the frame even more. The black on black was kind of lost, but the glitter really stands out. So I'm going to add um, some images to my panels here. So I'm just going to do the ghost and the bat. And the reason why I picked these is because all the other things kind of need to sit on the ground. And my ground is actually hidden behind it. You know, it, you only see it when the light is on. So I thought it might look really weird if there was a cat shoved all the way at the bottom of the panel or floating in the air. So I stuck with things that are flying. So I've got bats and I've got ghosts. I also wanted to keep it simple and not make it too complicated um, because I think that the vellum is really the star of the show on this lantern and the silhouette of the leaves. I'm doing really simple Copic coloring here. I've only got two grays there a T5 and a T7. I went ahead and colored everything with the T5 and then I'll go in with the T7 and just do a little bit of shadows and then blend those out. These backs actually end up looking really dark. Um, you can't see their eyes in the pictures which is kind of weird. Uh, I think it also would be cute if you added maybe googly eyes to them um, if you wanted a more fun look. Now for the ghost I'm just taking a very pale it's an N1 Copic and just tracing right around the edges on the inside of the line. And then I'm going to go in with my colorless blender and just trace along those edges too to kind of blend it out and soften the edge of the line that I made. And this just kind of gives it a nice definition to the edge. But it gets to remain white. And then I'm going to go in with an RV00 and add some little rosy cheeks. And I'll color all my images exactly the same and use the dies to cut them out. So what I've got here are the thin 3D foam squares. They come in black, they come in white. So I'm using the black ones on the bat and the white ones on the ghost. And I thought this was a great idea. They're really thin, they're half the thickness of other foam squares. So they stand out just a little bit, but not too much. Um, in hindsight, I probably should use the white ones on all my pieces because the back side is white cardstock. So when you look at the lantern from the inside, the ghosts, you can't see those squares, but the bats you can because they're black. If I had stamped the bats maybe on black cardstock, it would have worked better. So now I'm going to assemble my lantern. So I'm using that ultra adhesive. That's the super sticky kind. And I'm putting it on that half inch flap. And then I'm just going to line up those two edges. Make sure they're really stuck down well. And then that's where that fold line is going to be. Isn't that really cool look? So now I can go ahead and put it on the other side. Sorry about me flipping it around so much. Just trying to kind of get a good angle so I can line it up pretty well. And then if all your sides are the same, you can just lay your box flat and adhere that other flap down and there you have it so here's a look 
at that lantern. I've got tea lights in this, but I recommend one of those um, battery lights so that the heat doesn't make the vellum warp. But I just wanted to get some good light for you to see what it looked like. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,